Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to Space Tourism, episode 10, in which we have the, the final bit, the final last piece in the infrastructure stage of our Space Tourism series. The first stage, infrastructure, that we've just are about to complete right now. Second stage is going to be... Uh, I guess, I don't know, it's, it's kind of sub-infrastructure, because these stations are all counterparts to the other tourism stations that we're going to have. And then the third stage, well, you know, the tourism stations we're going to build. And then the third stage, we'll be doing the tourism, you know, providing it for people. So we're about to finish off the last few jobs we have to do. Namely, the last two flights that we sent off uh, on its way, you know, we sent off on its way out to Jewel in the last episode. However, before starting off to do that, we are in fact going to save our Spacia Launch Stage 2 as a sub-assembly part, because this is new in 0.22 version 0.22 and 0.22 again the new update that we have uh, just converted space tourism save to 222 lots of twos in uh, this video today probably so yes I just wanted to quickly make sure I remember to do that so that in the future I can build anything and then attach that onto it and it's cross facility as well so I can build something in a space plane hangar and then just attach uh, the space uh, space year launch stage to it. So here we are. These are the two flights that are on their way out to Jewel. One of them about 30 days ahead of the other, so we don't have any problems in terms of time scale. This is the first one that's going to encounter Jewel, so we can just follow this one, do all of our docking and planning and burning and error breaking and whatever, and then once that's all done, we can move over, swap to the other craft and do the same for it. And that's pretty much what the duration of this video is going to be. The one we're controlling right now is the cruise shuttle, the low LKO to Joule shuttle, which has got our four test tourists, uh, our Kerbal astronauts that we put onto the station in... was it last episode? It was either last episode or the one before, or something. But anyway, it's, it, it's the one, you know, the one with the big nuclear deterrent symbol outside the window that looks so good for tourists that they really, really quite like. So yes, uh, back to the, the idea of planning what we're actually going to get done in the series. I think infrastructure now has finished. Probably do it in 10 episode slots, kind of makes sense, depending on how long it takes. Episode 10, infrastructure finished. Episode 11, tourist, uh, I, need, I need a word for that, tourist, tourist facilities, 10 episodes of that. Episode 21, will till till 30, 21 till 30 will be actual, ah no, 10 episodes, it's way too long to do tourism. 21 till 30 will be something special, you know, short little snippets perhaps. Uh, no, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Tourist infrastructure, yes. After that, perhaps some special things. There's a project I want to work on to update my Artificial Gravity series. And I have an idea for what I want that to be. And very few select people know what it is, because I have mentioned it once. I briefly mumbled something about it, as I tend to do in videos. Um, I, I like how I keep on swapping back at this point to the Kerbal. Just checking the different stages of animation. It's kind of blank, and then starts to burn up. TERRIFIED! And then once the burning up kind of slows down and stops being all too vicious, uh, which it will do shortly. We've reached periapsis, and now we're going back up. And once the the flames outside the window surrounding the lighting up the nuclear deterrent symbol, as soon as they stop, then we ought to swap back to the Kerbal and see... No, he's still terrified. Terrified out of his mind. Different to being terrified and know what's going on. You know. Not sure which is better. Uh, there we go. So the flames die away. Look at the Kerbal now. And... Now, oh, come on! Come on! Look at the. Fine, fine, I'll go back to commentating the video. Grumble, grumble, grumble. So, we've error braked, we've slowed down our uh, our escape velocity trajectory. And we brought it down, we brought our apoapsis down roughly to the height of our orbital space station. Now, we want to cancel out our relative inclination so that we're on the same plane as it, and then just do a little magic mumbo jumbo to actually get us docked. And there we go, you see you see there inside, they looked all happy. They look pretty happy. This mission has been 393 days long. They've been sitting in those chairs. 
going through animation facial loops for 393 days. Man, it's going to be fun for the tourists. We'll have to do something interesting, won't we? Going out to Jewel. 339 days just going out to Jewel. Nah, it's got to be. We're gonna, gonna have to do something about that. Like, how about a Voyager? I don't know how long, how much longer it would take. It's possible that we could do a slingshot round Eve or something, and have it take slightly longer. But you know, they did have the joy of seeing Eve. Hey, space tourism. We might expand that out all over the solar system. You never know. It was originally just going to be Jewel because the moons of Jewel and stuff like that are probably the most interesting parts of the solar system. But there's still a chance that we can expand out. Other interesting places in the solar system include... Uh, um, okay, it's all interesting, right? But specific individual aspects. Moho. Moho, closest planet to the sun. And that's got something very interesting. Ooh, something we could definitely do tourism in, in there. Uh, spoiler warning in five... Well, spoiler warning in, in five, four, three, two... One spoiler occurring in five, four, three, two, one. On Moho, there's this really big hole that goes right down nearly to the center of the planet. It's amazing, and we could, you know, do something awesome in there. Now, all the people who close their ears, which yes, Kerbals can do. Y you're all Kerbals, right? All the people who close their ears when they heard the spoiler warning don't know how long the spoiler's gone on for, so they're just watching the video, having it muted with their ears closed, going, would you, would you, can I, can I, can I talk now? Can I talk now? Yes. Yes, you can talk now. I mean, I mean, listen, not, not talk. Anyway, back to the video. We have uh, done all the nonsense in orbit, and now we are coming up, ready to dock. This will be the second shuttle to be docked onto the space station, but this is the one which the people are inside. Now, unfortunately, we've actually got no crew modules. No, no actual habitation modules on the space station, which I would send the craft out here with one on, and I probably will, but I want to I want to get away from doing just plain building and engineering. I want this to be more special and exciting. I want to add all the, the lush corridors and big open spaces and, you know, all the tourism things, because it's a very nice perspective to have on space. Um, it's a realistic perspective as well, because space tourism is a growing industry on, on Earth, not just on Kerbin. And it is actually, potentially, a good way to fund things. That and reality TV, which sadly I don't like the idea of. Not really sadly, I, I just don't like the idea of reality TV. Right, we're going into space, we've got a mission in space, it's very difficult, very dangerous, new, one of its kind. Well, can we, can we, oh, it must be really dramatic. Can we, can we make a, a reality TV show out of it, maybe? Uh, okay, but, but the, the drama would not be so much. 393 days of, uh, of n sitting around in the chair. <laughs> Whereas reality TV people going, come on! One of him is sleeping with the other one of him. No, no, we have got footage of all the crew at all times. No, um, okay, he wants to kill him. No, 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 it's a break, it's a mission. Uh, he, he wants to jump out of an airlock, he wants to commit suicide. No, 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 these people are psychologically tested before going on the mission. It just wouldn't work. Just people want something entertaining. They want drama. They want... It's not exactly reality TV, it's just overly dramatic TV. You know, people would never settle for just... Day 343 of the space industry... Space tourism reality TV series. Uh, our Kerbals are still in their chairs. Come back next week, everybody, for another installment. You know, it just wouldn't work. So they're gonna have to do something exciting if they want to go down the reality TV route. Like I, I have got so many ideas for my series of space tourism. We could do reality TV, couldn't we? We could just have day 393, and the Kerbals are still in their chairs. Come back for the next episode. My name has been Hawk Gaming. I shall see you all next time. And this would all be very entertaining, of course. Real time as well, you know, 393 days actual upload to YouTube. But done in one minute sections. 393 days in one minute sections. So that would, you know, that would be a lot of content, essentially. And, you know, you all want me to upload more videos, so this is what's going to happen. Uh, moving on from that, 
our mission. This is the fuel transfer mission. The, the first one was the crew. And this one is now the fuel. Because we are getting quite low. We are getting significantly low on our space station. And this is the infrastructure, so we don't want to be out of supply. We want to make sure we uh, can provide for any space tourism projects that we've got coming in as of episode 11, probably. Um, so what are we doing now? Uh, well, we have to use some of the fuel we're carrying, unfortunately. It's not too much. It isn't... I mean, we are carrying two big tanks worth of fuel. One orange tank worth in those four segments. And now we're using half of that. But we probably only end up using a quarter. So we still have a fair amount of fuel. And there is still the uh, the the satellite, the thing, the big thing. Uh, what's it called? In the big grey orbit. Uh, it's got jet fuel and RCS tanks on board. Now, for space tourism, lathe is going to be a hot topic. So despite the fact that it's minus 20 degrees C on the surface, I believe. So actually, no, it can't be. It's got to be, I think it's like 1 degree C. It's just above freezing because it's got liquid water oceans. So despite that, despite that fact, it is going to be quite a hot topic for tourism because of its oxygen atmosphere, because of the planes, boats, you know, you can get so many cool things. Um, so having jet fuel, having just the liquid fuel without the oxidizer, is quite a valuable resource. Uh, we don't create too much of an imbalance by just draining the liquid fuel and leaving the oxidizer on the space station. So if we perhaps mount a rescue mission to that gone-off probe with this said fuel on board, we might be able to, you know, do some interesting things there. Right. Now, now, I'm wondering how on earth I'm going to spend the next, uh, eight minutes. <laughs> what do I do again? Isn't it dock and then game over? Oh no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, no, yes. Maybe. Um, I believe, I believe this video has not been correctly edited. <laughs> okay, hang on. You know everything I was saying about, oh, how am I going to spend the next eight minutes? Hang on. Uh, how am I going to spend the next four minutes? Right, there we go. I just sneakily changed the length of the video. Uh, so, so I've missed commentary on the last little few bits. <clears throat> we had the we had the nuclear engines. Just ignore what I'm saying, and ignore, listen to what I'm saying now, but ignore what I was just going on about there. Uh, we had those engines mounted onto the back of our uh, of our thing. Now, of course, we want to make room to dock on our extra load of fuel, and we kind of also want to get rid of that. So I've just pushed out the way using this fuel tank as a battering ram, essentially. And now we can dock our thing on there. But that's not the end of it, because we have, again, another set of engines down on the, on the end of this particular set of fuel. And this set of engines does not have its own probe or RCS tanks. But it does have a docking port, and it does have docking ports all around the side. So it's not entirely useless. There are potential uses to be used in the future. If we have some fuel, we have some sort of payload system, we need to attach a few more efficient engines onto it, we can just slap this on the back. As long as it's a, a correctly sized docking port. But we can probably send out some adapters, you never know. So, I was going to just push it away from the space station, instead I ended up docking with it. Uh, which could have worked, but I don't think I really want to use it from this perspective right now. What I want to get done is go in front of it, bring my craft up, and then using the base docking port, attach it on this way. So that the centre of mass is all aligned properly, rather than being mounted laterally. Which isn't equal, it isn't uh, mirrored, it isn't mirrored along the uh, Y axes. Why axes? It depends, doesn't it? Yes, but it is a mirror, so we're going to have to uh, dock it like this. And having drifted very slowly away from the space station, we eventually bring our ship down and get a docking just there. Now it looks like a very, very long spaceship, I suppose. Hmm. And now it's time to bring this all the way back. So 87 meters we've drifted, we just need to burn very lightly. We'll end up... The thing is, RCS now... We only have a few RCS ports on this cruise shuttle, and of those few, they don't really do much thrust. But we can turn quite quickly, so using nuclear engines we're actually able to do a lot of the main manoeuvres, just pushing us over in this direction. 
something to consider in the future, certainly. However, what we need to consider now is where are we putting this thing? We can't really dock it anywhere that makes sense. Um, nowhere along the, you know, the axes, the y axes. So if we just kind of ditch it underneath here and hope no one notices. Hey, it's an engineering space station. It's not a space tourism one. It doesn't need to be beautiful. And I docked it, and then just as it was wobbling around stage, I undocked the ship so it didn't, you know, it didn't have to be docked as well to that particular point. And then brought it over here, and dock it back up on this node over here. So there we go, we've got our space station, our engineering infrastructure in general, fully completed. And that is the end of episode 10 of Space Tourism. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked the video, then please do like the video. And we're going to move on to something a bit more interesting now. Over is the infrastructure and begins the age of space tourism. Or at least the engineering side of space tourism. Thanks again for watching and I shall see you all next time.